and welcome to your weekly edition of Discussions. I am your host for Discussions on Winwood Radio, Ian Hamilton Trottier. Check me out on Twitter at Ian Trottier, I-A-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-E-R. Check me out on Instagram, I-A-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-E-R. Please patron my website, I-A-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-E-R dot com. That's Ian Trottier. And I want to give a special thanks to a new sponsor of mine that's coming on board. They provide energy to excel out of Santa Barbara, California. Whether you need mental clarity, physical stamina, or added focus, maximize your performance with uptime energy. And we thank Uptime Energy for their interest in this weekly program. And I'm frequently asked, Ian, what do you talk about? Okay, so the first word that comes to my mind is controversy, controversial issues. And today I was approached as, hey, you're the guy that talks about Conspiracy theories. Today we bring on a guest, Dr. Paul L. Williams. After listening to Paul, you be the judge as to whether you want to use that label on folks that deliver you and us alternative views. Because Dr. Paul L. Williams, he's the only person, or the first person rather, to have won the prestigious Keystone Press Award three times in separate categories in the same year. He makes regular appearances on NPR, MSNBC, and and Fox News. His writings have appeared in the USA Today, Wall Street Journal, and National Review. He's a former consultant to the FBI. Did that for seven years. What areas did he consult the FBI on? He happens to be what I would use the term expert in the fields of terrorism and the Italian mafia criminal organization. The Washington Book Review had this to say about Operation Gladio, the unholy alliance between the Vatican, the CIA, and the Italian mafia. That came out in 2014. They said, it is an estimable, scholarly, and intellectual accomplishment, which is unrivaled. Now, just because the topics that I deliver to this weekly program may be totally out of sync or alignment with what is received on your and our mainstream media news, You then can use that label or mass, the masses will use the label, conspiracy theory. It's a theory. Well, let me tell you this about a theory. And before I tell you that, I'll just briefly mention. Here's the facts, folks. This is the fact. Nalid is a toxic pesticide that is deemed illegal in the European Union, yet it was used down here in Florida. Couple that with the Zika virus discovered in the 1940s in the Uganda forest. Zika, folks, the patent to cultivate Zika is owned by the same majority shareholders of the people that developed the Nailed pesticide. That would be the Rockefeller Foundation. Through Anthony Sutton, I tie that into something called the Hegelian dialectic. So you label me whatever you want. And label alternative news whatever you want. Be my guest, be their guest. But the fact of the matter is, I dig for facts. 
and so should you. And just because your governor or senator or mayor or president is telling you something, and John Kiriakou, who's been a guest on this show twice now, can testify that just because they're saying something to you doesn't mean they're being honest. Operation Northwoods. If you've heard of this, good. If you haven't, let me tell you, it is now a declassified operation, CIA operation, declassified November 18th, 1997. Operation Northwoods was never carried out, but what is it? And what was it? It's a documented false flag attack plan originating within the United States government in 1962. I.E. Cuba, false flag attacks are a military and war tactic used since Roman times. It's called, it called for the CIA, Operations North, Operation North was called for the CIA and or other operatives to commit genuine acts of terrorism in U.S. cities. This is 1962 on both military and innocent civilian targets. These acts of terrorism were to be blamed on Cuba in order to create public support for a war against that nation. Operation North was included proposals for hijacking and shooting down commercial airplanes. Sounds like a bell's ringing. And if yours isn't, it should be. Attacks on our own military and U.S. Navy ships and bombing civilians in American cities, followed by the introduction of phony evidence and other tactics that would impl- implicate the Cuban government. Does any of that sound familiar? Source, occupy slash marines.org. Look into it. Okay. Why do I mention this? Because, hey, Ian, you talked about vaccines. You talk about colony collapse disorder. That's honeybees being killed. You talk about GMOs. R.I.P. Mila de Mur. And I'll go into that for a moment. In about seven minutes, we will be bringing on Dr. Paul Williams. But here's another quote, or rather here is a quote, that I want to throw your way. Robin Cooks, a former U.K. foreign secretary, he wrote in The Guardian, in the U.K., article in 2005, this. Throughout the 80s, the Osama bin Laden was armed by the CIA and funded by the Saudis to wage jihad against the Russian occupation of Afghanistan. Al-Qaeda literally means the database, according to Robin Cook. It was originally the computer file of the thousands of Mujahideen who were recruited and trained with help from the CIA to defeat the Russians. And let me go into this quote again about 9-11 from Italian president. So why should, as an American, should I even care what these other people say? Because Christopher Christopher Boland, who is an American, wrote a book called Surviving 9-11 where he questions intensely what happened that day. I don't take any stance on it, but I looked into it because I can and because I have freedom of speech and I have freedom of thought. Okay? And so I do. Because the fact of the matter is, again, I base all of this research and I base this program off of Nailed versus Zika. That article that I published on Honey Colony is available. You can Google it. Google my name with the, with the two words Zika and Nailed, N-A-L-E-D, and you'll find that article. So regardless of one's nationality, I understand that there are Wars and struggles over natural resources on this planet, okay? Man, for some reason, seems to be unable to live in peace. But the fact of the matter is, we all have a basic search and want for happiness. Well, let's come together and make that happen if we can. A former Italian president has this to say about 9-11. He says it's common knowledge that the CIA was behind the 9-11 terror attacks. Okay, look, I'm not saying they were. Okay, Cameron Joseph, talking points and memo. I'm not saying that they were. But I'm saying that what we're going to talk about today on this program with Dr. Paul Williams will probably blow your mind away. 
sorry to use that <laughs> that word. Hopefully it does not uh, offend. Not literally will it blow your mind away, but it will open your eyes. And that is the motive of doing this show for you. As I produce this thing and I host this, okay, yes, I've got people that are coming on board. They will want to sponsor. They are sponsoring in one way or the other, okay? This is all for the good of humanity and exercising that constitutional right that we have. And if you're Paul Craig's Robert, you call it Paul Craig Roberts, and you listen to that episode with him on the show, you know that he has an issue with that. He says, you don't have any constitutional rights. They're taken away. You don't realize they, they are taken away, that they've been taken away. This is what the Italian president said. All the intelligent services of America and Europe know well that the disastrous attack has been planned and realized from the Mossad with the aid of Christopher Bolin, the Zionist world, in order to put under accusation the Arabic countries, and in order to induce the Western powers to take part in Iraq and Afghanistan. He's the former two-time Italian president, Francesco Cosiga. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying he doesn't have inaccurate information, but I'm saying that We'll be talking to Paul Williams today, who I think will probably have some information um, to address these items towards us. Now, Mila de Moore was found floating face down, floating face down, i.e. it doesn't sound like she drowned because she was the body was floating. Uh, no water were in the lungs. She was found floating face down in a pool. In the Cambria Suites, I think is a name. It's a hotel in Washington, D.C. Last Tuesday, she's, she's a, actually she's a friend of mine, and I've communicated and t- spoken with her about the mosquito fiasco and debate and controversy down here in Florida. She was a resident of Key West, and she was opposed to something called Oxitec, which is a genetically modified uh, factory uh, for making mosquitoes genetically modifying the manufacturing of, 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 of genetically manufacturing mosquitoes uh, anyway and of course in hopes to combat the zika virus um why is that controversial because well we we'll go into that in another episode but let me at least say mila uh you were mourned May, May 19th, I believe, at Gramps in Wynwood. There will be a celebration of her life from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we thank her for her work. She was delivering to the EPA 200,000 petitioned signatures to stop the fabrication of this uh, genetically modified mosquito. A British-owned company, Oxitec, happen, happens to be, uh, down in the Florida Keys. So, folks, exercise your right to free speech. Exercise your right to uh, democratic values, if you will. We're in a constitutional republic and uh, stand up and talk about whatever you darn well please. Thanks for tuning in to Wednesday's edition of Discussions. I air every uh, Wednesday at 5 o'clock. You are on Winwood Radio. We will be back with Dr. Paul Williams.
Okay, welcome back. This is your host for the weekly edition of Discussions here on Winwood Radio. Dot com. We broadcast from the Windwood District of Miami, Florida. And as promised, today we have special guest, former consultant for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He's also, also an author. Uh, his, I believe, unless he'll correct us here, one of his, uh, his, his well, his, his most uh, recent book that I know of, and, and I know this is wrong, Paul, but uh, what I know you by is Operation Gladio. That's the unho- unholy alliance between the Vatican, the CIA, and the mafia. That came out in 2014. We bring on to Winwood Radio today, we welcome Dr. Paul L. Williams. Hey, Ian, how are you? Uh, Paul, good to I, be with you. Thank you, and, and I appreciate, appreciate your time coming on Winwood Radio. Um, all right, so take it away, man. Basically, tell us. I think most of my listeners have no clue that the CIA is even involved in an operation with the Vatican. Can you can you go from there and just tell us the basics? What is Operation Gladio? Okay, uh, Operation Gladio is an operation that got underway in 1947, just when the CIA was established. And the purpose of it was to uh, ward off the spread of communism throughout Western Europe. And the way that they did that is they work with, uh, uh, Alan Dulles work with people like Richard Galen, uh, General Galen, who was an SS commander under Hitler. And, uh, and, uh, uh, in, in Italy under a guy by the name of Borghese, who was a, a general under Mussolini. And these people had stay behind units. And the stay behind units were uh, supposed to uh, fire if the communists started to take over Italy or take over Germany and, and protect the Italian people and protect the uh, German people uh, from the communists. And uh, we started to fund these stay behind units. And there were thousands of them. It ended up being thousands of them throughout, throughout Europe. They stretched from Norway to Sweden. Uh, to England, to uh, France, to Spain. I mean, there were, there were thousands of units. And the only way that, uh, and we, once again, that, this, is, this is 1947. It was the first covert CIA operation. And the CIA, when it was set up, had no funds for covert operations, none at all. And uh, they, had, they had funding to, you know, to, to, to just operate its, their offices, and, and, and the, the basic bureaucracy that they had set up, but they, they had no funds for covert operations. And uh, uh, th- this was a real puzzlement because they, 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 wanted to, uh, they wanted to fund these units, and they, once again, you're talking about units that would cost millions of dollars a day, even back then. Uh-huh. Okay. So what happened was uh, a, a guy who, who served in the OSS and was a founding member of the new... Uh, uh, Central Intelligence Agency. His name was Paul E. Hallowell. He was he had been stationed in China, and in China he worked with Chiang Kai Shek in the Nationalist Army, and uh, and Chiang Kai Shek funded his entire army by selling heroin to addicts throughout China. Mm-hmm. And Hallowell uh, came up with the idea that hey, you know, and he started to help uh, Chiang Kai Shek. He set up. Uh, cargo air transport, which brought the narcotics, brought the, the heroin, the, the raw opium, uh, from the uh, from the golden uh, tri- triangle sure. of uh, of uh, Saigon, Laos, and Burma, and not now Myanmar. Uh, he brought the he set up cargo air transport to 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 freight these uh, the, the, the narcotics into China, so Chiang Kai Shek could sell them. Well, cargo air, air transport was also an offshot of, of the Flying Tigers, but in any case, this was that was that which was taking place during World War II. And in 1947, uh, Hallowell got together with uh, General uh, William Wild Bill Donovan, who was the head of former head of the OSS and a founding member of the CIA, and Alan Dulles and uh, James Angleton. Uh, and uh, he said, look, I got an idea how we can fund this agency. Uh, why don't we start, uh, we can work with, we, we have worked, and we will continue to work with Lucky Luciano and Vito Genovese, a member of the, members of the Italian mafia, who, who have helped us plan the invasion of Sicily. We'll work with this, these people, 
and would set up a heroin unit. Now, this sounds, this is all incredibly well documented. And uh, Hellebo's idea was uh, that the, the mafia, uh, including Santos Traficante and uh, would bring uh, would bring the drugs into in, into New York, and they would be sold at jazz clubs because jazz was becoming the, the rage in 1947. And uh, Hallowell figured that since the, the inhabitants, the denizens of these jazz the, the jazz clubs right. uh, were lo- like to smoke marijuana, mm-hmm. that there'd be suckers for heroin, and so. Uh, Sure enough, uh, an, an experiment got underway, a project got underway. Heroin was brought into the inner cities of, uh, in the beginning, New York, in Harlem. And the, 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 the founding members of the CIA believed that, uh, that the heroin would, would, be, would be used by the black community, but it would never spread to the suburbs, that the whites would never use it. And this is in, uh, in, in classified and unclassified CIA documents to this day. And uh, sure, sure enough, the the project got underway. Her, heroin, uh, the, the the heroin was sold. It was a big hit. Brought in uh, oodles of money for the uh, for the CIA. Uh, at that time, there were only twenty thousand uh, heroin unit use, users in the United States, but it started to mushroom overnight to hundreds of thousands. And these great jazz musicians like uh, Charlie Parker, Ben. Uh, 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 Fats and Vera, all these people, uh, Billy Holiday became hopeless addicts, and uh, of course they died of their addiction. But uh, but that 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 all began in 1947, and the the the, the CIA could fund Gladio, which were these stay behind units throughout Italy, and it, it was fueled throughout the uh, throughout the oncoming decades uh, through heroin. Uh, Especially, you go you go into uh, into Vietnam. Uh, the CIA created a bank called the Nugent Hand Bank just to fund the the the, the, the cash from the heroin sales. The Bank of Credit in, in Commerce International in Karachi, Pakistan. There was once again a laundry. Another laundry was uh, the Castle uh, the, the, the the Castle Trust and, and Bank in Miami, and another one was the Vatican. And uh, what happened was the funds were, were washed. They were sent to, to numbered accounts in Switzerland and Luxembourg, and uh, that funded Gladio. And Gladio ended up being an operation in which uh, uh, governments throughout the throughout the world were, were toppled, in which uh, political leaders were assassinated, including uh, Aldo Moro in, 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 in Italy. Even a pope was assassinated, John Paul I. In which uh, and, and, and governments were toppled throughout Latin America, all under Gladio, and Gladio is still going on. It's still going on. The way it, the way they the the, the, the the Gladio operated was through a system of false flag attacks, and these uh, these began in Italy in 1970. Uh, the first was at Piazza Fontana, that uh, the CIA work with the work, work with the Gladio unit there. Uh, they staged a terror attack, uh, the bombing of Piazza Fontana, and, and they blamed it on the communists. And there were numerous incidents throughout the uh, 1970s where, where horrible incidents would occur, bombings, uh, assassinations, uh, 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 killings, and they were all blamed on the Red Brigades. And they were really all conducted, it came out later, by Gladio units. And uh, the purpose of these these attacks was to uh, have the people uh, become terrified of the spread of communists, so that they would keep the Christian Democrats, that's a Catholic Church, the Catholics Party, in power. And uh, well, once again, it, 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 th- th- these false flag attacks persisted throughout Italy. Uh, they continued throughout South America. Uh, you even got to to keep the uh, the flow of heroin to the United States. He had a false flag attack at the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, Lyndon Johnson appeared on TV saying that the the and they, all all programs are halted to for his special announcement uh, that uh, the North Vietnamese had fired on the American fleet in the Gulf of Tonkin and that hundreds of sailors were killed. It never happened. There were no sailors killed. The North Vietnamese uh, had never fired on our, our fleet at all. This came out later. It was all a false flag attack, but it brought us into Vietnam. 
and uh, and and for a war against the, uh, the the North Vietnamese and the communist. But uh, this was once again all part of Gladio. We see it, it taking place even with uh, Saddam Hussein with Gaddafi. Uh, it's a, it's an operation to persist. Uh, Ian, what can I tell you? It's uh, yeah. So, so it sounds like Operation Gladio is kind of a, a large umbrella. And are there other operations that are sub-operations of Gladio, i.e. Operation X? or Well, it, yeah, it spawned a whole group of operations. Operation Condor, uh, Operation Mockingbird, in which the CIA really took in control of the media. Uh, a whole right. host of operations. Uh uh, it, 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 it launched, uh, as I, as, as I said before, it, 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 yeah, it Gladio is still going on. It, right. it launched the, it, in, in, in Central Asia, uh, Gladio resulted in setting up all these schools under, under Fatula Gulen that are staffed by CIA agents, uh, so that, uh, these countries will become unstable or people are, where the, the schools, at the Gulen schools, students are, are, are taught to become radicalized in Islam. So that the Gladio can spread throughout uh, Central Asia, and most of it right now is uh, uh, Gladio is no longer uh, being used, of course, to ward off the spread of communists since the Soviet the Soviet Union collapsed. Sure. It's really being used by uh, a money cartel that has, has developed uh, uh, throughout the course of this the same decades. A money cartel that was always related to the CIA. Uh, that originated out of the Council on Foreign Relations. They control uh, what's happening now with Gladio. And it's all to, for control of natural resources, right. the hegemony of the United States uh, to extend that so that uh, China and, and Russia can get, gain control of the, the resources uh, right in, or, you know, in the country surrounding them. And, and it, in, you know, anybody, no American, most Americans are unfamiliar with Gladio. Absolutely. But uh, it, it's one operation that has really transformed the entire world. Now, let me add one thing about Gladio. Sure. When, when I'm a Catholic, okay. and I was raised in the Catholic Church. Uh, my name is Williams, and people presume I'm a Baptist. I'm not. And what happened was, after I had finished writing Gladio in 2014, okay. I was crushed. I realized that the, the church was complicit in all, um, almost all of this, and uh, my faith was, was just crushed. I went down to I went to Washington D.C. Wow. and I met a guy there by the name of uh, Rodney Howard Brown, who's a minister. Okay. And Rodney Howard Brown had come from uh, South Africa, and uh, he was very aware of Gladio. And I, I uh, you know, I heard him speak, and I talked to him later. And he explained to me how all of this was related to a money cartel, and it had been from the beginning, and that Gladio had been persistent throughout Africa, uh, throughout South Africa. And uh, I got together with him, and uh, uh, we just, uh, we together we wrote a, a new book called Killing Uncle Sam that's infinitely more informative than Gladio. And that's a book that I would encourage your, your, uh, your, your listeners to uh, go out, seek it out. You, they could find it at uh, glad or at killing of a book dot com. Uh, they could they could ferret it out at at Barnes and Noble dot com at Amazon dot com. But I wrote wrote it with uh, Rodney Howard Brown, and it shows how the money cartel has manipulated Gladio. Uh, it's a cartel that was re- really formed in South Africa in eighteen seventy seven by a guy by the name Cecil John Rhodes, who sure. formed the secret formed a secret society yep. in this society in, in this society were the the most prominent people in in, in england uh balfers and milners and uh, the rothschilds and they all became part of this society the society of the elect that uh Is began this... in in it, it began in, in london but it spread once again to to southern africa and and from the the society of the elect uh came the Pilgrim Societies, in, in the po- first Pilgrim Society in the United States under uh, J.P. Morgan. And from that Pilgrim Society came the Federal Reserve. Okay. And, uh, and from the Federal Reserve came uh, the Council on Foreign Relations. And a union between uh, the Morgan family, the Carnegie family, and the Rockefellers. 
And that all occurred in the Council on Foreign Relations. It gave rise to the Bilderberg Group, to the Trilateral Commission, to the World Bank, to the International Monetary Fund, uh, to the World Trade Organization, to the United Nations. And these people were spearheading Gladio. And I, you know, uh, when I when I got together with Rodney and uh, and we began to map, map all this out, you know, the scales fell from my eyes. But it's it's really been some undertaking, and and all the proceeds from killing the Sam go toward uh, the River School of Government, which is a, a which is a school at uh, yeah. the uh, in in Tampa, okay. uh, uh, and and, and th- where uh, students are taught to uh, combat play things like Gladio, developments like Gladio. So whether we're really taught to see, see what the CIA is doing, what the Federal Reserve is doing, what, what is really the, the shadow history of the United States. But all the proceeds for, from killing Uncle Sam go toward the River School of Government every time. And that's why I would encourage your listeners to uh, promote this book, to seek it, to buy it in, you know, if they have classes, to buy it for their classes, to buy it for their study groups. It, it's a it's a real shocker and it's an eye opener and it's a very important book. Now and uh, yeah, Paul, I I I don't know if you want to say anything about. So a former guest that I've had on my program is uh, she was a, a senior policy advisor for Ronald Reagan on the Department of Education. Uh, both of her her father and her uh, grandfather were Yale grads, and uh, when she became opposed to something called Best which is the betterment of education through science and technology, she was, she was, she was uh, released of her position. So she was, she was removed from, from, the, from the administration. And uh, what she goes into uh, is, what she goes into is uh, something called uh, 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 Skull and Bones, okay? And that's a, it's a society at Yale. But yeah, when, I know it very well. I know it very well. When you, when you yeah. had started talking about Cecil Rhodes, uh, there's a fellow that sent me down a trail of kind of trying to understand this a little bit better, a named Anthony Sutton, who was a, a former uh, Hoover. Well, he was a Hoover uh, fellow at, at Stanford, and of course, there's a connection with with Hoover and the CIA, and then the, and the OSS, the predecessor to the CIA. But maybe if you, maybe you can give some insight on the connection between Cecil Rhodes and All Souls School at Oxford. Are you are you familiar with that? Oh sure. Well, you see what happened. We're, we're all the members, all the members of uh, Cecil Rhodes uh, Society of the Elect. Every single one of them were from Oxford, and uh, the, the purpose, uh, uh, of course, of the Rhodes scholarships were to to get uh, American and well, students throughout the world, but primarily from America, uh, to attend Oxford so that they could expose be exposed to the thought of John Ruskin and the thought of other globalists so that they could uh, become proponents of a globalist agenda. And many, many, many very prominent Americans have been Rhodes Scholars, including Bill Clinton. And, uh, oh, yeah, they, they, the Bill Clinton, the, sure. the, the, the Rhodes, the Rhodes, Cecil Rhodes, and the, the Society of the Elect uh, were, were very much uh, wedded to, uh, to Oxford University. So, uh, Paul, you bring up a, an interesting, what is the... In your research and your opinion from, from how you see things, and, and, and certainly you come from the Catholic faith, and, and as you said, this kind of just, <laughs> not to use this again, but the second time I use it today, kind of blow your, it blew your mind. How could this be happening? What is the connection to the Federal Reserve and, and the Vatican? Well, you got to know, they, 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 you know, it's a linear, it's, it's a, I, I'm surprised if, if more people had been exposed to to Rodney Howard Brown. Uh, you, can, you can really see the line. The, the line happened, it's, it's very easy to, to, to understand. Rothschild uh, it controlled, well, he was a member of the Society of the Elect. All this is, this is not, this is not conspiracy theory. This is history. And anybody that thinks that it's a conspiracy theory hasn't read, you know, doesn't know the first thing about, you know, the, the, the history of mankind. What happened was, the Rothschilds uh, took control of the Bank of England. They c- complete control. They still maintain c- complete control. And what they wanted to do is set up a, a central bank in the United States. They tried it twice. Once at the very founding of America under Alexander Hamilton, and then after the uh, the Battle of 1812. It was dim- dismantled, the central bank, by 
Andrew, Andrew Jackson. But their idea was always this, that if you can produce the, the country, any country's currency, uh-huh. you control the country. Sure. And that was what was so important about the Federal Reserve. You see, the, the Rothschilds realized that uh, if you have a standard for, for currency, for instance, a gold standard, uh, what would happen would be, uh, you know, uh, people wouldn't come into the bank. All the, all the people who do banking with you wouldn't come in. The odds are uh, astronomical. They would all show up on the same day to demand gold in exchange for their paper, for their paper certificates. So they realized that they only had to, to keep, they could they, they only had to keep 10% uh, of the gold for the uh, certificates, for the certificates that they were issuing which means that their certificates were based on really 10% of the gold that they had stored in a, in, in a, in a vault. So if they said they had, you know, if, if, if they said they had one ounce of, of, uh, of gold that, that was worth uh, $300, based on that one ounce, they would issue $3,000 or $30,000. Uh-huh. Okay. It's called fiat money. And that's how the, the Federal Reserve originally operated when, when America was on the gold standard. Now it's not any standard at all. So the Fed and these other, and the, the Bank of England, the other centralized banks, produce money out of nothing. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Money's not based on anything. Yeah. What, what is the connection? And that, yeah, go, sorry, go ahead. And, and, and in any case, that, that, once you, you got that, and they got control of the Federal Reserve, then they started, they realized they had it, 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 that by the same means they could get control of the United States government. So they set up. They set, well. They set up, and the and the British government. They set up the uh, uh, the Royal Institute for International Affairs in 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 London, uh, which is known known as the Chatham House, and they set up the Council on Foreign Relations in the United States. Once again, these very same people, the society, the elect, the people who handled the money, and realized that everything can be manipulated in the shadows, and they could they can. Uh, you know they can perform they can perform economic and political wonders, and uh, they 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 groom their own candidates. Woodrow Wilson, Franklin Delano Roosevelt brought us into wars in which we had no really no, no right to be participating. And uh, uh, right now, you got to realize the power of the, of the for instance the Council on Foreign Relations since the time of Roosevelt, every single Secretary of State except right now every single secretary of state has been uh has been a member of the council on foreign relations everyone and their departments the members of their departments their undersecretaries council on foreign relations uh by and large the the secretaries of defense all from the council on foreign relations now this is small ian this is not a very this is not an organization with millions of members they only have three thousand members and from that one pool you got to raise all of all of our Secretary of States, all, that most of our CIA directors, the, the Federal Reserve Chairman, they're all coming from the same pool. Uh, it, it, it just cannot be coincidence. Right. And they, they're dictating the policy. The policy is set for them within the inner meetings, within the study groups, within the Council on Foreign Relations, and the people that control the, the study groups or the the Rockefeller. Oh, the Federal Reserve, by the way. All the these are these are. The Federal Reserve is a pri- private corporation right. that has shares. The American people don't own the Federal Reserve. Right. Right. They, they're, they're shareholders, and the shareholders are foreigners right. for the most part. The Rothschilds and people like that. So uh, really, that, that's, that's what happened. This one society of Cecil Rhodes uh, really grew in power and, and, and influence, and it, it, it morphed into uh, other societies, but the same group throughout history has been manipulating our events. So, Paul, how do you distinguish between and who would who would have a more controlling stake, if you will, in the Federal Reserve, which uh, wears the facade of being federal and being uh, something that has the the average American uh, at at their best interest at their best interest. It's only really technically ripping them off off of. Uh, does the Federal Reserve even have gold? It's been stated that they don't have any gold. Uh, so who who is ultimately controlling or has the largest controlling stake? Would it be the Rothschild, 
uh, family and foundation, or however that can be characterized, or bank, or the Vatican, because if we look globally... No, 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 no. The Vatican is not a player at all. Ah. The Vatican doesn't have... No, the Vatican... When you're talking, Ian, about the Rockefellers, and you're talking uh, about the Rothschilds, and you're, you're talking about the Goldman Sachs and these people, oh, no, they're, they're, they're far, far, far wealthier than the Vatican. No, the Vatican would be a very, very insignificant. The Vatican is not a player in, the, in this at all. Interesting. Okay. Um, so, the, 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 but the Vatican, uh, the Vatican, we have to tie in Operation Gladio, and certainly. Well, Gladio, you yeah. see, all the drug money was 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 laundered through the, the Vatican, which okay. was, you know, I mean, at that time there were, there was no. How are you going to launder drug money in the 1940s and the 1950s? You, you, the, 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 they found out, they discovered, and, and the Catholic Church was virulently uh, anti-communist, and Pope Pius XII uh, controlled the Vatican Bank, and, and Donovan was, was a good Catholic, and uh, Angleton, the, the founders of the CIA, were good Catholics, and there were uh, uh, Knights of Malta, and they, they had a relationship with Pius XII, and they said, look, in order to ward off the communists, you know, we need covert funds. And in order to get these covert funds, we need to make use of the Vatican Bank. And Pope Pius XII agreed. And what happened was that the drug money, and he was aware where the money was coming from, uh, started to flow into the Vatican Bank. The, the Vatican Bank, you got to realize, is a sovereign institution. It's not part of the Holy See. It's a sovereign institution within a sovereign state. No outside agency, money val. Uh, a, a, a bank exempt. No outside agency can scrutinize uh, what's going on within the Vatican Bank. Its books are closed to everybody. Uh-huh. It's a sovereign institution within a sovereign state. Even the Bank of Italy has no jurisdiction over it. None. Uh, there's there's no money trail that, that would lead in or out. Right. So it was a perfect laundry. Uh-huh. And for you, what happened was yeah. the drug trade grew so exponentially uh, over the decades yeah. and uh, uh, that uh, the, the Vatican couldn't handle it all. Huh. So the CIA uh, started setting up other banks and doing business with the very bankers that I'm talking about right now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So you got, you got a, the point right, right the, 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 in the United States, yeah. this was, uh, the, the, these, are, these are accounts in Business Insider and and, and every major uh, every major business journal. Do it, when we had in two thousand and eight, when we had that that uh, that economic almost crash. Right, right, right. America was only sustained by the fact that so so many trillions of narco dollars, narco dark, <laughs> much, dollars from narcotics, yeah. were flowing through the the U.S. banks. That's wow. true. Interesting. Well, the third, the yeah. third most valuable commodity on planet Earth Trucks. is heroin. Heroin. <laughs> the politics of heroin. Al McCoy, former guest on my program. Oh, uh, one that that exactly. Anyone, anyone that doubts this should, and that's very, that's excellent, Ian, because you know most people don't know about people like McCoy. And I mean, there is no great. There, were, in my estimation, you know, I have a PhD. I was, I was trained like McCoy, but there's his work was really groundbreaking. And uh, very, very brave. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, very brave. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I mean, there, 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 there's been people like P- Peter Dale Scott. So just not me. There, there, yeah. there's been. A, what, I should really tell you this, Ian. The, the way I came upon Gladio. Okay. I, I was an investigative reporter for years. I worked for every major newspaper you can, you know, you can name. Okay. Uh, I, I, uh, I was working with the FBI, and I was, I was. I was doing uh, uh, reports on Islamic paramilitary compounds that were cropping up throughout the throughout the United States. One in Islamburg, New York, where where Muslims were taken primarily from prison. They went to these paramilitary camps. They were trained in uh, on, with AK forty sevens. They were trained in obstacle courses in guerrilla warfare. And when they were finished with their training, they were sent to Pakistan. And from Pakistan, they went on to Afghanistan uh, to join the Taliban. Now, this was going on. This was going on during the, the uh, during the uh, the Anglo uh, Soviet the the the, the Afghan Soviet War from uh, 1980 to 1990. But it was persisting after that. 
And there were, there were dozens of these camps throughout, throughout the, the United States. And I, I visited these camps. I, I, I almost got killed in these camps. I felt, I, I fell in their, their, as a matter of fact, if you see Fox News where these were on, they're all my, that's all my film. Uh, I, I found the, uh, the training, uh, what was going on there it was really terrifying. Okay. And, uh, I, I, I kept exposing more and more of these camps and I was, I, I was reporting it to the to the FBI, right. to the state police and nothing happened. Nothing oh, happened. Then I, I realized that the, the, the person who established these camps, Sheikh, uh, Jelani okay. was brought here in 1979 on a, on a CIA transport oh with blind Sheikh Rockman from Cairo to set up the camps. Wow. Because they, they realized that, that these people could recruit the, uh, uh, the black Muslims to take part in the jihad. Oh, wow. And they, they kept funding, and the CIA was funding these people and setting up their camps. And even after the war was over, mm-hmm. the training was going on. And, uh, it, it was to control the Taliban and take make sure that the that the drug trade there was protected, and then uh, uh, when the when the Taliban uh, started to destroy the the poppy crops, that's when we had the invasion of uh, of Afghanistan in, in two thousand. They were destroying poppy poppy crops in two thousand because they figured it was a violation of of Islam, and that's when we had the invasion. But the camps, these paramilitary camps, were still going on, and when I realized that they were set up by the, the the CIA you know it was it was incredible sure. and another thing is i was i was doing a lot of a lot of research on the gulen movement fatullah gulen who was kicked out of turkey in 1979 he's a very radical imam uh, he set up all these radical schools to to spread islam throughout central asia and uh, he he ended up here once again came to the united states on a cia transport and uh, stayed here, and through, in, he, he has a, a fortress in, in Sellersburg, Pennsylvania, not far from my house where I'm speaking to you. I went up there, I investigated it, uh, I, I investigated his schools, uh, he, he established schools throughout the world to spread Islam, militant Islam, to bring, every, to bring all these Asian countries under Islam, and he once again is a CIA ploy. And it, this was a CIA tool to, uh, so, th- so they realized that by, by controlling, by Gulen controlling the, the population, they controlled Gulen. And by, in that way, they could have access to the natural resources of Central Asia, which are vast, especially around the Caspian Sea. So uh, once I found that out, that that's a CIA operation and the power military compounds were all part of the CIA, it was, you know, and then I met, as I said, uh, uh, Rodney Howard Brown. It was uh, it was enlightening. It was killing to say the least. That, yeah, that's yeah. how young Akasia came about. So it, before, because I'd like you to I'd like you to talk a little bit about, uh, about that. But uh, Paul, before that, for listeners to kind of grasp grasp this in in a, in a in a, in a, a, a more uh, conducive manner, um, it sounds like. And you've made the distinguishment between the Vatican. It sounds like the Rothschilds are a major, powerful player in the economics, in the global economics, and how things trickle down. But, Paul, I want not to ask only, you. Not only the Rothschilds, yeah. they're probably even more powerful than the Rothschilds right now, were the, uh, are the Rockefeller family. Really? you got to realize what the Rockefeller family had. You know, I mean, that that... that that's the, you're, you're talking That's about gas. not only oil, yeah, sure. oil and yep. natural gas, but you're talking about banking. You're talking about you're talking about okay. major concerns. And you got to realize that when when uh, Amico uh, merged with BP uh, in in 1990, I mean that was a merger of the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. So, but the the, the Rockefellers have been incredibly powerful. And you got to realize that since time began, every war, Karl Marx wrote this, every war was based on economics. And you got to realize that the, the, a money cartel, economics, uh, the, the money cartel, the entire history of the United States, and especially what we're doing in Syria right now and what we're doing in the, in the Ukraine, that can only be understood, understood by following the money. If you don't follow the money, mm-hmm. 
uh, you, you you don't understand what's happening. You're not big For instance, in, <laughs> in Syria right now, Ian, what you have is uh, you have incredible reserves of oil and natural gas and gold and uranium at the basin of the Caspian Sea. That's at in Iran, in Iran. And the, the, the beginning of the, the move to tap into these resources, and once again, we're talking about we don't want the, the, the Russians to control these resources. We don't want the Chinese to control right. them. We want them. Yeah. And I'm saying we want them, but the people that benefit from that control are the, are the Rockefellers. Well, in order to get the, these resources, uh, first of all, the first thing that we did was uh, we launched an attack of Iraq, which borders Iran. And... Uh, we, 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 uh, and the, 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 the second step is to take control of Syria because Syria has access to the Mediterranean Sea. Iran, where the, where these resources, the Caspian Sea is landlocked. So we need a, there, there needs to be developed a pipeline that would flow from Iran through northern Iraq into Syria to the freighters. That's where, that's where the future of the world is being determined. That's why the Chinese right now are involved in, 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 in the basin of the Caspian Sea. That's why the Russians are there with Syria, and that's why we're there. Okay. So- it's, it's all about the money. And once you, once you, 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 you got to take, even like Gaddafi, a, a guy like him, it's all about the money. You got to realize that Libya was the most oil rich country far richer than in, in, in oil than we are. The, the, the richest uh, oil company in northern Africa. It's all about the money. I mean, he never did anything. He never took any steps against the American people. He never tried to invade the United States. The Taliban never tried to invade the United States. Right. It's all about the bloody money. And once you, get your, you, you take your eyes off the money, then, then you can't understand it. So, Paul, uh, tell us a little bit about killing Uncle Sam, because I, that seems to be a prominent message right now. Uh, uh, you know, we can talk about Operation Nightingale, how media is controlled by a small group of folks. Um, that's why shows like this are becoming more popular and more important uh, as long as the Internet stays free and we can get our voice out there. But what's, I think... What a lot of Americans become more and more uh, concerned about, especially with, and you're talking economics, with California wanting to break away. You get this major divide in politics, yet there's strings above Trump. I mean, there's, I, I heard once, I don't know who it was, there's like th- something like 32 uh, levels above Trump. I mean, he's, uh, he's like a puppet. But w- killing Uncle Sam, I mean, that's a, that's, that's basically what we're talking about here are, the rights that we uh, the rights that we enjoy as Americans are being greatly infringed on. And Paul, a, a prior guest that I had on a few weeks ago, uh, Paul Craig Roberts, uh, who's a, a, a fe- who was a fellow at Oxford um, and also part of the Reagan administration, he says those rights don't even exist. So tell us a little bit about uh, uh, oh, killing Sam. Oh, please, please, Ian. Listen, what I did was I went up. There was an in. Uh, uh, a couple of years ago, in, in, in 2007, 2008, there was a plot that I uncovered in, in, in Toronto to, uh, uh, to, to blow a parliament and to behead the prime minister. You probably heard, yeah, well, this was national news, the number one news. I, I was the one that broke that. I was up there doing the investigations. And uh, when I, after I broke it, there were a lot of the perpetrators of, 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 of the attempt to behead the prime minister and to to blow up uh, Canadian Parliament were were uh, at McMaster University, which had a uh, which has a, the largest nuclear reactor for educational purposes in the Western Hemisphere. Well, when I when I revealed that in the United States on a show like this, I was sued by the kit by uh, McMaster University, a Canadian university, for millions of dollars in Canada, saying I didn't have the right to uh, to to state something that was true. See, in Canada, uh, a truth is not an ultimate defense. We, they don't have freedom of press. They don't have freedom of speech. So, look, at when it came down, and uh, if you get sued yeah. by a major firm like that, <laughs> yeah. look, at it, it happened to me. 
what happens that 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 hearing i would never back down i stood my ground to the bitter end but that hearing was set to take place at the hague an american citizen writing in america speaking in american programs and sued by a foreign government so don't tell me your, your listeners about rights your the rights have been taken away take a look at the patriot act i mean where are where you know if americans don't know that they lost their rights then uh, you know it, it they, they 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 no longer have freedom of association according to that the government can monitor religious institutions without you know, with even without suspecting criminal activity, uh, the, 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 there's no longer the, the government. The, uh, the the freedom of information is stopped. The freedom of speech. They can the government can prosecute librarians. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, you're, you're right. The rights have been has, have been sure. taken away. It, it, habeas corpus, illegal. It, it's just been going on. People have lost more and more and more of their rights and they're willing to give up their rights for the sake of so-called security without realizing that the, without realizing that the enemy for the most part has been manufactured right the enemy was never the, the Taliban never Saddam Hussein never Assad never Gaddafi that, yeah it's 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 all bogus was never never the the North Vietnamese and look at the people that got killed, just the millions that have been killed for lies. Right, right. Is this the same thing, Paul? And you look at, like, the Roman Empire that stretched, let's say, a thousand years. Is this the same thing that George Washington was running from? Is, is, there, is, there, any, is there any common thread with what we're facing today, with what the founding fathers of this country were facing? Certainly. No, yeah, because you can't you can't liken. I mean, uh, you, you know, people that that that, that assume that we're uh, you know, once again, I'm a, I was a Latinist. I have a, a PhD in, in medieval theology, and uh, uh, I, I taught Latin for years. But and and I'm very very familiar with Roman history. No, the the fall. Yeah, I mean, you, you get you have things that are similar. I mean, we're certainly experiencing barbarian invasions in the United States right now. But no, no, you can't you can't compare ancient Rome to the United States. It's, I mean, the time, everything has changed. The technology, the sure. means of communication, everything is everything is so radically different. Everything is so radically different from uh, you know uh, 1789 when the con- when uh, when the Constitution was 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 adopted. Hey, it's, you can't, and you can't do that. Uh-huh. Uh, it, w- w- what we have right now is is a situation that was created by a money cartel. And uh, it's it's a unique situation, and uh, they control everything that we're doing right now. Everything that we're doing, they control. And I thought that with uh, Trump, that, that yeah. there was a, a hope, but you can even see with with uh, with, with what's happening right now uh, in Syria that he's being manipulated, mm-hmm. and you can see the, uh, the first appointment that, that, that he made to the Supreme Court. That appointment is that appointee is being that that new justice is being manipulated. You can't stop it. You can't stop. It. There are people in, in with far greater power than, than any Supreme Court justice or any U.S. president. Is it safe and, to uh, say, Paul? Is it safe to say that the American people need to and must demand? An investigation into the Federal Reserve is that a place to start? That that's a place, that's a place to start. I mean, uh, Ron Paul, when he was screaming about that for years, he certainly that's a wonderful place to start. You know, take a look at audit the Fed. It can't be audited. Audit the Fed. Let's find out what's going on there. Right. Let's find out what's what, what's going on at the CIA. Dismantle the dismantle it. I mean, what does it what does it do? Right. What are, what in the world does that agency do? Why do we have military installations throughout the world? Why? Why are we protect? Why do, why do we have military installations in in Germany, for instance? Please, come on. Right. I mean, it's, it's silly in Japan. Why? I mean, these countries can take care of. They certainly don't need us. Right. But why are we there? I don't get it. Why in in, in throughout Central Asia? Come on. What Bring is, the boys home. Yeah. I. Paul, what is the um. It, what is what what's what's the next step here? What what do Americans need 
what what is the action they they must start to take in your opinion? Well, I, I, I'm 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 going to give you uh, really from talking to 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 Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. I'm going to tell you, that, 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 I, I think he would agree with all this. First, audit the Fed, like you said. Two, have them produce real money, not money based on nothing, money based on some standard. Let's have a standard back so that the money so that they can't manipulate recessions and periods of progress. They can't withdraw the, the, the withhold the flow of money to, to, to create hard times or and then didn't, didn't, didn't make didn't, didn't supply a, a surplus of money to uh, to 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 promote good tax. No, no, no. A group of people shouldn't have that right. Stop these endless wars. In them. In these. No more wars without an act of Congress. No more. Huh. We've had enough of them. Wow. Korea, North Vietnam, Vietnam, the the war on terror, the war on the war. Let's stop them. No more. No more war. Terminate the CIA. Absolve the national debt. They said, "Oh, we're under the." They can absolve it. Absolve it because most of that debt we owe to ourselves. We owe to ourselves. Unbelievable. They're, 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 the United States had borrowed the money from federal agencies. Absolve the debt. Stop university funding. That's a big one. Uh-huh. Stop university. What? What good? Are, why are we? Why are all taxpayers throughout the country supporting these universities that don't need the money to start with? Why? Uh, look, at if education is valuable, it shouldn't have to be subsidized at the extent that it is by the federal government and the state government. Stop it. Only provide useful, meaningful education for those that want it. Right. The next one is in, in, investigate the foundations. These foundations are, are, are doing un, un, untold. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, the, the, the World Council of Churches, the... Uh, that has promoted the uh, uh, revolutions in Angola, Mozambique, Zimbabwe. I mean, come on, we're supporting that through through these foundations. They need the 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 the, 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 the foundations by subsidizing the universities. Control the universities. They control what's right. taught there. They control they control who teaches there. Investigate them. They, they they promote a gay agenda on the, the, the on, on every university. A, a transgender. I mean, that's all from these foundations. Let's investigate them. I mean, that, that was done in the 1950s. Eisenhower brought a halt to, halt to that, but we need to do it. You know, we need to downsize the government. Absolutely. We need to impose tariffs. We can have to stop free trade because that's how the, this money cartel operates: breaking down borders between countries, realizing no borders. Causing ma- mass migrations. No, let's stop that. Let's stop our, our, our jobs going. We can't compete with the Chinese, or our workforce. We right. can't do it. Right. Right. I mean, these people right now, look, we can't, we can't compete with the Vietnamese. They'll work for 30 cents an hour. <laughs> How are you going to compete with them? <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no possible way. And, and so what happened was, when, when I was growing up, uh, and I'm an old man now, but we'll even go. Let's go back to 19, 19 uh, at the turn of the twentieth century. At the turn of the twentieth century, thirty percent of our jobs were manufacturing. Guess what happened? And 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 eight percent of our jobs were were uh, for in 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 the public sector. Now it's reversed. Less than ten percent of our jobs are in manufacturing, and more than thirty percent of our jobs are people working in the public sector. That means people working for government. It's crazy. Wow. And it could be done by drain the swamp. Another thing is over, overthrow the ju- judicial tyranny that we're subjected to. Why are we subjected to the rulings of these idiots on the Supreme Court that are on there for life? Right, right. Why do they have to dictate everything that we do? You can't have prayer in school. You can't. Uh, you, 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 you know, you 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 can't stop the fl- the, the flow of immigrants. And hey, come on, we can do whatever we want. We're Amer- we were Americans. Right. Over three, it's been done before. It's been done before. Uh, uphold states' rights. Look at if California wants to go crazy, if if they want to legalize everything, they want to legalize smack, legalize heroin, legalize uh, uh, what? What? Do, do you care? Let them do it. Yeah. And if, if people in Florida have the good sense, you know, where they 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 want to have 
they they want their guns. They want they, they want their rights, their constitutional rights. Then they should have them. But states' rights have to be upheld. Immigration, this mass migration, has to be stopped once and for all. Yeah. I mean, it was done. You know, in the, the, until until 1965, we had a quota system. Let's bring it back. We had a quota system because we realized the American people, by and large, came from uh, the West, Western countries. And, and, and the quota system was based on the fact that we thought America was a perfect country. And since it consisted of that population, the quota system was to maintain that population, where most of the people were from Western, uh, uh, from Western Europe. But right now what we've done is we've done away with that, thanks to Lyndon Johnson and Ted Kennedy, with the... Uh, Hart Seller Bill, and we opened the United States, opened the, the open, opened it to the third world, which is the Islamic world. So we have a point right now where Islam is now the second largest religion in the United States. Wow. We've done that to ourselves. Well, let's stop it. Mm. Let's stop it. Uh-huh. I mean, there there are things that can be done. What is your opinion, uh, Paul, on the phrase "new world order"? Well, the new. T- t- Look at anybody that, that, that it, I've seen the New World Order. Unfortunately, like I told you, I was going to be brought to justice at the brought to trial, not justice. I I had I was I was going to be brought to trial at the Hague. Don't tell me the New World Order is 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 the New World Order is here. Don't, aren't people aware of the World Bank, of of of, of the in, in, the the International Monetary Fund, of the World Trade Organization? The new hey, it's here. It's here. How about the United Nations? How about how about our troops under under UN command? Right, right. I mean that's global government. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean this is. I mean people are saying, "Oh, this is a conspiracy." These people are so stupid; they don't realize it's already here. That they're, they've been enslaved. Look at people are being enslaved. Right? They say, "Oh, we oppose oppose abortion." We have, we, and you know we would never. But they're supporting it. They're supporting it with their tax dollars. I'm sorry. They say, oh, we're opposed to this, you know, to the, these these crazy wars. But they're supporting it. They're supporting it. Stop it. Paul. Stop in, it. It can be done. In closing, and I appreciate your time. This has been a wonderful conversation, and I thank you for the information. Would you please tell, tell us, um, tell us, what is who's who's funding and and what what's what's behind? I had no idea this existed. What's behind the River School of Government? Oh, the River School of Government is the, the River School of Government is that that is that is Shangri La. That is for real. The River School of Government is where students are taught exactly what I'm, I'm what I've been talking about today. Where they're immersed in that, so that they will leave the, the school of government and. Uh, they will enter government. They will enter government. So guess what? And they're going to enter government with sledgehammers so they can do away with all this stuff. They can stop it all. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that, that, that is people, people tell, tell, have your listeners go to killinguncleSamBook.com. KillingUncleSamBook.com. Go to Barnes & Nobles. Just, just get that book. And that, believe me, that will be that. That's a, 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 a that's a dynamite that will blow up the new world order. <laughs> Paul, I love it. Thank you so much for coming on the program. You're amazing. okay, buddy. Take care of yourself. Okay, bye. Okay, right. Take- Ladies and gentlemen, Doctor Paul L. Williams. Uh, this guy knows what he's talking about as far as I'm concerned. Okay. He digs pretty deep there and he uncovers a lot of truths, folks, that you and I have no idea exist or existed. Okay, you, you, <laughs> you heard the man say he was brought to be tried at the Hague. 
He's an American citizen for crying out loud. What does the Hague have to do anything with him? And why weren't people like you and me informed to be able to step in front and come to his aid? Now, I'm pretty much out of time here, but as you can see, he seems to be safe today. He got himself out of it. Ladies and gentlemen, killing Uncle Sam. Get the book. Dr. Paul Williams. Research him. I will be right back. After a short break to close out this program, you're tuned in to Discussions. It's Wednesday. You're on Winwood Radio. Metallica Four Horsemen, bringing it back in here to close this out, folks. Paul L. Williams, former consultant with the FBI, look in and question what is happening in your country. It's pretty easily said, right? I mean, Operation Gladio. Did you even know that ever existed? Did you even know it still exists? It's still going on. Yeah, you're at Operation X. Had you ever heard of Operation Nightingale? How about Operation Northwoods? These are all operations that are funded by. Well, you heard Paul say it. The fact that your neighbor is going down to a jazz club and getting addicted to heroin. Hegelian dialectic. Okay. If I can control the opposites, I control the nature of the outcome. Dr. Anthony Sutton, Stanford Hoover Fellow. All right. 
Now, with with Paul, I brought up briefly George Washington. Um, it's I didn't expand on it too well, but what I wanted to mention was Adam Weishaupt, and we didn't talk about Germany, but Adam Weishaupt uh, basically created his society, and we did talk about societies on that show with Dr. Williams. Uh, Adam Weishaupt created his society May 4th, that's May Day, of 1776. Uh, just a couple months later, the United States declared their independence on July 4th. Is there a link? Follow the trail and follow the money trail, and that is sound advice from author of The Killing of Uncle Sam, The Demise of the United States of America, Dr. Paula Williams. Next week, we will be back with G. Edward Griffin. He's the author of The Creature from Jekyll Island. And we're going to be talking again about the Federal Reserve, but he's going to talk a little bit more about the Rockefellers, a little bit more about the Dulles Brothers, I believe. Okay, so we'll, we are honored to bring on G. Edward Griffin. We'll follow that up and start the month of May off with April to June. We'll follow that up with Tom Engelhart. Now, I had mentioned Dr. Al McCoy, who got his PhD from Yale, and it was ready and slated to be published by Simon Schulster, I think it, I think it was the publisher. And the CIA went knocking on his door and said, hand over the manuscript. Uh, that's a former episode of mine. Dr. Al McCoy. The Politics of Heroin in Southeast Asia. He's the author. And we're fortunate to bring on Tom Engelhardt, who's part of the same think tank tank called uh, the Tom Dispatch. Okay? Al's a member of that think tank. We bring on the brainchild of the think tank. Tom Engelhardt is a graduate of Harvard, where he earned his master's degree. And he'll be on May 9th. We'll follow that up with scheduled at the moment. We'll see if uh, the schedule still persists. Nomi Prins, former Goldman Sachs uh, and uh, executive. And then uh, May 23rd, folks, we'll, we'll be bringing on filmmaker Joel Gilbert. He's the founder of Highway 61 Entertainment. He's a former executive at Paramount Pictures. And his book, There's No Place Like Utopia, will blow your mind away. Because he he draws a thread between Plato's Republic, Utopia, the book Utopia, fifteen sixteen by Sir Thomas More, and Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto. The guests continue to inform. They are incredible people doing incredible things, and I dedicate my time and my days to you, the listener, and to them, because together we work to make this country great and, bottom line, to be awesome. And we can only do it if we work together, folks. We can only do it if we work together in one common bind. Follow me on Twitter, at Ian Trottier. Follow me on Instagram, at Ian Trottier. Please go to my website, I-A-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-E-R.com. You can donate to it. You can send me a comment. You can listen to any previous episode on it. And you can check out some of my sponsors. And since day one, I want to give credit to chem-talks.com. Because they only publish peer-reviewed publications in science. That's chem-tox.com. To my special listeners up in Canada, thank you for listening. We will be talking about autism in the next few weeks again by bringing Wayne Road back on the program. He'll be joined with, by a special guest out of New York. 
an attorney that works very endlessly and, diff- and hard to uh, make uh, vaccines uh, just. Folks, thank you for your support, and thanks for tuning in to Winwood Radio. Until next Wednesday at 5 o'clock, I am your host, Ian Hamilton Trottier. Be awesome.